there's a powerful way to improve your drawing that will probably never be suggested to you by any art teacher. That may be because it doesn't require classrooms or instructors, and it really doesn't affirm any of the traditional teaching methods. It's simple, inexpensive, and you can do it at home. It's this, tracing. You'll need tracing paper. You'll find a 12 by nine pad convenient. If you have access to a computer printer or even a photocopier, you have everything you need. You can print out any image you like onto letter sized paper. That print can be tucked under the first sheet of a tracing paper pad or taped to the back of a sheet of tracing paper. How you proceed is entirely up to you, but consider some options. You could just make some reference marks to establish general proportions and then eyeball it from there. But it also works to capture some more specific shapes and contours. Remember that edges that you can't quite see through the tracing paper are probably not very important. Okay, I know you've been told that tracing is somehow cheating or that doing it is going to impair your learning to draw from life. But I just don't think there's any evidence for this. If you think about it, unless you are going to restrict yourself to still life, you will probably be frustrated by not having many hours available to practice with either posed figures or with outdoor scenes. And you might not ever practice drawing the large category of things that move. During my illustration career, I can assure you that I traced, at least partially, many, many photographs of people and things that I didn't have access to. And it was not only fast, but I found that I could use it to produce good results. And here's the important thing. It didn't make my drawing worse. It made it better. Better in live drawing situations, better in drawing from my imagination. So how does this work? I think simply from the repetition of moving your hand confidently and quickly over shapes and contours that you know are correct. It's something like learning to play a musical instrument. Your brain feels the distances between joints and hands, landmarks on faces and bodies. It feels the shapes of clouds. It feels the difference between a horse's height at the shoulders and its length. And it ingrains those proportions into memory. That muscle memory comes back to serve you when you need it to draw from life or from memory. It's that simple. You can practice drawing anything in creation, anytime you want, in any small space of time that you have.
You can even do it sitting in front of the TV. I hope that helps. Take care.